the Neo Geo. A very rare to come by arcade machine as well as home console that if you ever played or owned, I am unbelievably jealous of you because, man, having a Neo Geo cabinet, that's, that's a life goal of mine. Seriously, it is. That is a very important piece of arcade history because the original arcade Neo Geo MVS existed to try and solve one of the biggest problems arcade owners could face. If you bought a game that completely tanked and no one wanted to play, you spent thousands of con thousands of dollars for basically nothing. And if that were the case, the only thing you could really do is try and sell it and recoup the losses and get another game sight unseen hoping that other people would play it. Whereas the MVS, or multi-video system, allowed you to, instead of having to sell the whole machine, go inside and swap cartridges that featured their own games, not unlike video game consoles at the time. And those cartridges, while certainly way too expensive to be used as home releases, at least were significantly cheaper than proper for arcade cabinets. And hell, some of those cabinets could hold multiple cartridges at once, which was pretty cool. And then, of course, they figured, since we've got this cartridge-based system similar to home consoles, let's just sell it as a home console. And it was like the most expensive console of its time. And man, do I want one. Now, you're probably asking why that's relevant. Well, the thing is, well, I don't have a ton of experience with Neo Geo stuff because... I mean, again, who had a Neo Geo back in the day? People all angrily shake my fist at in jealousy of, but I have played a few of them. And while my knowledge and experience of the Neo Geo is somewhat limited, I can tell you out of all the Neo Geo games I've played, the singular best one, and the one I was going to review before any other one ever, is Shock Troopers. Because, man, this game is amazing! Seriously, it's just that cool. Based on my limited experience, the pinnacle of Neo Geo gaming. Now, the story follows some guy I swear is half gorilla, kidnapping some old man and his daughter, and somehow that means him and his many faceless expendable goons, which I swear are all going to be shot in the face by the end of this, somehow get to take over the world. But not if the shock troopers have anything to say about it. And that's your lot because, I mean, come on, it's an arcade Ikari Warriors style game. It doesn't need much of a plot, although it does have some very pretty cutscenes. Seriously, they are very nice to look at. It being an arcade game, the story is kind of a whiff, if that. But gameplay-wise, gameplay-wise is where they get you with arcade games, and this one does it so well. Before you can even begin, you are given so many different options as to how you want to play, first and foremost you have to decide between Lone Wolf mode or team play. And this makes a pretty big difference because Lone Wolf allows you to then proceed to a character selection screen and then start the game, whereas team play allows you to proceed to the same screen but select multiple characters that will each serve as a singular life. Now you're probably wondering why do you need to select multiple characters? Is it just to differentiate from player 1, 2, 3, 4, etc? No, they actually all play completely differently. And that's part of the reason why I love Shock Troopers so much. You have eight different characters that actually play fundamentally different. So let's just start off and sort of address the differences between the characters. First and foremost is their character appearance, and this affects their overall sprite and hitbox size. So certain characters, such as the rather aptly named Big Mama, are going to be significantly larger than other characters, which means she's going to take a lot more bullets and it's going to be harder to dodge stuff. Whereas a smaller character, say one of my go-tos, Milky, she's a significantly smaller character who's a lot easier to dodge stuff with, but she has the drawback of having significantly less health. Again, Big Mama, she can take about a dozen or so shots before she dies, Milky gets two. There's a little bit of a difference in gameplay strategy. The bigger characters, they can take a lot more bullets and they can just wreck shop, whereas the smaller, more weaker characters focus more on a dodging game. But that's not where the differences end either, because each of the characters have different weapons. Now, while their main weapons are all the same, some very light testing I did seem to suggest at least some characters do a little bit more damage with their weapons than others, although I can't confirm that. They do, however, have different explosive weaponry, and it all behaves differently depending on the characters. Again, going back to my two prime examples, Big Mama has this giant bazooka that just explodes everywhere, although it's a little tricky to aim, whereas Milky, she chucks these Molotov cocktails that create like a wall of fire to protect her. Again, she's kind of a squishy character, so being able to play a little bit defensively with her, definitely a bonus. You've got Crocodile Dundee over here with his 
Australian boomerangs equipped with dynamite for some reason, and this guy that's definitely trying to be Rambo with a dynamite-tipped bow, as well as typical video game grenades and all sorts of crazy jazz. Every character has a different explosive weapon that not only fires differently, but has different explosive effects, covers a different range, has the explosion last at different intervals. There are gas grenades that actually spread out. It's really, really neat. And that's not even the end of it either, because despite the fact this is definitely a run and gun game, one of the biggest things about this game, especially if you're playing for score and it being an arcade game you should be, melee attacks. Because every single character, if you get up close and fire individually at opponents, will pull out a melee attack. And this is significant. It is a huge game changer, especially if you're playing for score. Because every melee kill you get for your character gives you a bonus. Now it's usually like a blue gem that gives you like 30,000 points, which stacks up if you go after every single opponent. But you might also run into health pickups, which give you more health. You might run into red gems, which are screen clearing bombs, or even the coveted gold gem, which is temporary invulnerability, which allows you to get in close to do more melee damage without any sort of threat to impede you. Seriously, it's a great system. And of course, because this is Shock Troopers with its eight different playable characters, everyone's melee attacks a little different. Again, going back to my go-to examples, Big Mama, she uses her huge working mom fists to beat the ever-living daylights out of any faceless goon that comes her way. Whereas Milky, again, being the smaller, weaker character, she gets a bit more of an advantage with a handgun that has like twice as much range as any other melee attack. She's a little broken and I kind of love her for it, but every character has like a different melee attack from knives to their fists. It's really stunning how different each character can bring a slightly different experience to the table. And then again, of course, you can pick between playing as a team, trying out all the characters, or just focusing on the one you like the most. And that's not even the end of where the experiences can vary, because you've got three different gameplay progression routes, and halfway through like the six levels, you can swap to another route. So if you like the start of one route and the end of another, you can just swap over if you like. And what's neat is it's not just a different coat of paint fighting the same enemies over and over again. They actually give you different varied experiences, such as fighting on a giant grapple line in the mountains, or fighting while riding around on a motorcycle. Seriously, they really wanted to give you so many different experiences, even though admittedly there are not that many individual enemy types. Despite the fact that there's only maybe six different standard enemies, the fact that the environment and the situation in which you encounter them actually ends up making every encounter and fight with them feel fresh, even though, again, there's so very few. Now, that doesn't work entirely to this game's advantage, though, and this is one of two complaints I have with this game, and that is the bosses. First of all, it's an arcade game. Second of all, it's an SNK Neo Geo arcade game. The bosses are not fair, especially the final one, but my bigger gripe is the fact that there's very few of them. And regardless of what route you choose, or even if you want to swap over routes, you're gonna run into like the same giant tank boss at least twice, maybe three times. That's just lazy. And I mean, not including that giant tank, there's a forklift boss you fight like twice. There's a helicopter boss you fight three times, and all routes end up culminating in the exact same level, fighting the exact same half-gorilla man who is just bloody cheap. Yeah, the bosses, they, they ain't great, but seriously, that is the one thing that puts a damper on the overall excellent mechanical experience that is Shock Troopers, because it is just a fantastic game in terms of gameplay. Now the overall presentation of Shock Troopers, it's a Neo Geo game, it's gonna be beautiful no matter how you slice it. First of all, visually, it has those nice, big, chunky, pixely sprites that are just so indicative of the Neo Geo. I love them, they are beautiful. Like I said, the cutscenes are completely throwaway for a story, but they're pretty and they actually change them depending on which characters you're using. So one character will be overlapped with another, or there might be an extension to an ending if you're playing as a specific character. Shouts to Generico McBlondy who gets an extended ending for some reason. And I mean, there's just so much detail in these tiny little levels. Just little background things, like little cats scampering around trying to get out of the firefight, and people running away and damaging bits of environment, and there's just so much in this game visually that is just stunning. 
There's also some different animations for the Japanese version of this game. As far as I can tell, the enemies have a lot bloodier, more gory animations, as well as a lot more unique death animations. I didn't record any of it here because I only played through the English release while I was recording this, but I gotta say, playing the difference, it did seem noticeable to me. I was like, wow, I, I don't remember those animations. Why are there so many different deaths? Oh my god, this was equal parts kind of grim and also kind of comical, not dissimilar to, say, Metal Slug. The overall visual presentation of this is quite excellent in that regard. And audio-wise, I guess if I had a second complaint, while the audio is great and it's got some nice hard rock and tracks, it does have the issue of, similarly to the enemy and boss count, only having like maybe six songs on the soundtrack, and while they're for the most part really good songs, there's one that I don't care for entirely, and it just needs more variance because you're going to be hearing the same tracks over and over. But they're still very well produced, and if you tie that together with the visual presentation, it is still pretty amazing. Now, if you want to get a copy of Shock Troopers on the Neo Geo, you're spending $150 for that arcade cartridge, and that's assuming you already have an arcade cabinet or a consoleized MVS to play it on. In which case, dude, seriously, share the love. I want it so badly. I'm so incredibly jealous. Uh, but. It's not the most realistic thing for a person to have. But the nice thing is this has been available on the SNK Classics Collection Volume 1. And no, there wasn't a Volume 2. There was a Volume 0, but it didn't contain any Neo Geo games. Almost as weird as that, like, 40th SNK anniversary disc that came out a few weeks ago that also had, like, no Neo Geo games. If it doesn't have Neo Geo games, who cares? Like, seriously, I just... I don't understand why you would do that. And the nice thing is that compilation that comes with about, I want to say like 30 games or so, some really good ones like the original Samurai Showdown, but let's just be honest, Shock Troopers is clearly the star of the show in that compilation. You get it for about 30 bucks, and that's not too bad. That's actually how I got introduced to this back on my PSP, although that's the last version you ever want to play the compilation on. It's also been available digitally on the PS3 for about a decade now, as well as recently being added to the Neo Geo ACA digital library of pretty much Steam, PS4, Switch, Pretty much every console nowadays, you can get it digitally, but that said, they're about $12 each, and they never seem to go on sale, which honestly feels like a bit much. I love this game, but $12 for a digital copy, that, that seems a little bit much. Now, the nice thing is, while they don't ever really seem to go on sale, last week they did release three on the Xbox One on sale, so I grabbed them all, including this one. I mean, it's Shock Troopers, there's no way I'm passing that up on sale. This is the Xbox One digital version, and that actually contains both the English release, the Japanese release, as well as two modes that I'm pretty sure are exclusive to this, both of which are different ways to sort of play score attack. One is see how much of a high score you can get within one continue, and the other is see how much of a high score you can get within five minutes of uninterrupted play. Both of which completely kind of flip the gameplay on its head a little bit, just focusing more on the proper score attack as opposed to the actual just completing the game aspect of it, which is interesting. But still, $12 is a bit much, but it's an excellent game, and if you want to play an awesome Neo Geo experience, like I said, this one is, as far as I'm aware, kind of the pinnacle. It's a fun, goofy, top-down time, and it's probably one of, if not the best, Ikari Warrior-style games, and for basically $10, it's excellent. If you're into arcade games and you want to play a fun run and gun, you know, a lot of people just immediately say, go get the Metal Slug games, and yeah, they're great, but, you know, maybe consider the absolute explosive blast that is Shock Troopers. Big mama, because she can punch things. Also, that guy can run about the speed of a car. That's impressive. 